Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you here. I'm Dario Buccino. I'm a composer. I'm a performer. And since the early 90s, I have been developing a musical system consisting of composition techniques, notation techniques, and performance techniques, all based on the parameterization of the performative processes. Performative processes, I mean everything that happens in the body and in the mind of the performer in the moment in which they give life to sound. There is something which happens, which is so deep that it's sometimes it's even hard to remember what was happening inside us when we were playing. And these forces, I think they may be, um, may be catched and used as a compositional tool. Um, what is the importance of the body while we are playing is at the same time underestimated and overestimated in the contemporary culture. Of course, we know that it's underestimated. I will not spend words on how and why it is underestimated. I will spend a few words about how it is overestimated. We think that when uh, we want to put the body in our music, it has to become <coughs> always so physical, as much physical as we can. But this is mo not what I call a body-centric music. I call my music a body-centric one because uh, what interests me in the body is the, f the thing that the body is the, is the reality where our inner reality, inner reality takes place. There's no possibility of being alive without a body, of course. So that's why I, when, I, when I first um, started to compose with the HN system, I tried to challenge myself and to write a composition which was beyond the sound and beyond the body. So that's why I decided to write a composition which was all only for the mind. Because if it is possible to compose something which is only for the mind, then it will be possible to, to put this energy inside a musical thought and inside a performative thought and to make it spring from this uh, mind depth. So I made this, this, I wrote this composition, it was in 94, and usually it's performed uh, in solitude. You have the score, and you you think what is written on the score, and you are of course alone. What I'm trying to do, what I want to, to what I try to do today, is to make a collective performance of this uh, composition. It it means that everyone will think more or less the same thing. We will be together, and will be of course a silent performance because we we will be everyone is engaged in, in thinking. There's an evident uh, affiliation with four thirty. 433 by John Cage, which I consider the grandpa of my composition. Uh, but the difference is, uh, is evident. In 433, what is written is the silence, touch it. And the inner experience is a consequence of this silence. Uh, in this case, the situation is reversed. What is written is the inner experience, and the silence is the natural consequences, the consequence, because we are focused on what we're thinking. Let's give a quick look to the to the score. So I'm sorry I can't turn the page. Anyway, this this is the list of symbol of the score, and now we will see in details. And these are the instructions on how to interpret the symbols. There are many mental actions. For example, the f and everyone every mental action may be uh, presented in two forms: forms form A, form B, or form AB. For example, the first symbol means suppress any thought. When the bar presents that symbol, you have to try to suppress every thought. Of course, it's impossible to suppress your thought, but it's, it's an attempt. It's your action. What I'm interested in is the condition in which you put yourself when you do that action. That's why I call them mental conduction. It's the condition set by an action. So the first action is suppress any thought. The second action is ignore any thought. 
and the, the second uh, symbol, the third symbol is alter, alternate freely the two approaches. So form A, form B, form AB. Then the second symbol means feel heavy. That's your mental action. You have to feel heavy. It's just an inner experience. Of course, everyone will feel heavy in a different way. The second form, the B form, is feel light. Always leaning on the ground, but light. And the second one is the alternation of, of the two. Then the third is perceive the world here and now with feeling. The, words, the word means sentimento. It's just very open. It's just something that you have to try to do. The second is perceive the world here and now with indifference. And then mix the two experiences. Then the fourth, the fourth action, Men verbally mentalize every thought. So blah, 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 blah. Everything you are thinking have to be, uh, have to be mentalized. And the opposite, which is the reverse symbol, is try not to mentalize any thought. And then the mix of the two. And then many others that it's, it's not necessary to, to, to look them in details. Then another action is the awakening of the, awakening of the senses. In some bars, it's written that you have to awake your sense of sight. It means that you have to look around and to focus, for example, in, on the center of your field, visual field, or in the periphery. And you have to focus alternatively on the center and on the periphery without moving your eyes. The sense of hearing, you have to concentrate alternately on the sounds which are close to you and the sounds which are distant from you. The touch, sense of touch, inner and outer, that means self-perception and also the feeling of, the, of your skin with your uh, with the, the tissues on and you focus alternately on the center and on the periphery, and so on. And then the second part of the composition is a little bit more conceptual. You have to be focused on the space-time unity, the fact that we are here and now, and that this here and now doesn't end here and now. There is, a, I think, a, a common misconception about the here and now dimension. It doesn't mean that, okay, it's gone. Here and now dimension means that space and times are Space and time are infinite and eternal. When we are here and now, when we really focus, we are here and now, we also realize that it, we, have, we always have been here. We, it's always a now. It's always been a now. It will always be a, a eternal now. And so you focus on this, and then you move in a sort of counterpoint, going with your imagination to a very close point, vicino, as close to you as possible, for example, two minutes ago, or as far as possible from this moment. So you can imagine this place, how it was 100 years ago. It's, of course, it's more conceptual than experiential because we have to imagine it. It's a game, it's, more, it's open like a game. For, or for example, you can stay in a moment here and try to explore with the mind the space which is as far as possible from here. We can go with our mind in, uh, in Italy or we can all go to Mars. And then there's this simple, it doesn't look simple, but it is, a simple algorithm which uh, allows us to compose complete, uh, continuously new uh, versions of the piece. The, r the rules that combine the actions together are strict, but the combinations are uh, random and are infinite. So it's like writing a sort of infinite variation of, of the same piece. And today we will compose a small version and we will try to perform it together. So on your chair, you, you can find the blank paper. Yes, uh, no, 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 th there's not, they have it. They Thank have you, it. yes, they have it. So now I will compose this simple version, which is here. Take your pencil because you have to make some drawings. A very small example, otherwise it takes too much time. <coughs> Let's say for example that it starts with the awakening of senses. Let's see which sense. Taste. So let's write on our page simply taste, like 
like this. Just write taste on your page. Then close the bar. Let's write H N in this way here. It means that our perception of space and time is totally free. H N is the acronym for here and now. So everything we, we feel about space time is good. It's, it's, it's like uh, ad libitum, let's say. And then let's focus on a mental action. The fourth, okay, which is, let's see if it's in form A, B. So, please write blah in a reversed way. And then the breathing, the breathing in this, comp in this bar is free. So write HN again on breathing, which is respiro. And tempo, let's see how much this bar has to last. As short as possible. So please write this symbol. Wait a minute, let's show it here. You can see it. The first one here, but you have to reverse. Let's see if I'm able to do it. Okay, this way. This symbol here, which is a corona, short corona, with exclamation mark and a box inside. So even time is in an intuitive way, in an experiential way. It's not objective time. This time means, this time signature means as short as possible. That is, you have to perform that bar for the shortest time possible, but enough to plunge inside it. This is very short. It means that you have to linger on the bar a little bit more. This is short, linger even more. This is long. You have to linger very much on the bar, very long, as long as possible. So uh, again, it's the uh, in internal experience which sets the, um, the phenomenon. So now you ha we have this bar. And we can try to perform it. It's just simple. We have to focus on our taste. Everyone has a personal taste in the mouth. And while we, while we do this, we have not to verbalize any thought. Doesn't matter what we think, we try not to verbalize it. Of course, it's impossible not to verbalize totally. But we can, we can try, because what's important is how much we, we aim to this target. And then we see what happens in our mind. So I will conduct you in a very simple way. Just start and we stop in a few seconds. Okay, I stop you. Sometimes it's, we can desire to stay more on the bar or less. But time is a very important dimension of this composition because if we respect the time signatures, when we perform a whole piece, we have a sort of internal, internal rhythm which doesn't depend so much on our feelings. It nurtures our feelings but it's not totally dictated by our feelings. But at the same time, of course, our feelings will shape the details. So now that we have made the experiment of composing the version, you have on your chairs some versions that I already composed that I would like to perform with you. So let's see which is the one which is called Prima Stesura. Uh, brief analysis. The first bar, the time is very long. The second one is long. The third one is as short as possible. 
the fourth is short, and the last one is a chain, which means it's free. Breathing. In the first bar, the breathing has to be a chain piano, which is more or less piano. Inhaling and exhaling piano. Sometimes it can be forte. Always in an a chain way. I mean, it's not a mechanical thing. It's not, it's just a little bit more energy or less energy. In the first bar, the con action, which is those two brackets, is free, is a chain. And the awakening of senses is the smell, sense of smell. In the second bar, breathing becomes free. The conduction is free, and the awakening of senses relates to the hearing, alternately concentrating on sounds which are close to us and distant from us. I mean sounds that we can really hear, not imagine, here. The third bar, the senses are free, and we have to feel heavy. The next bar is carpe diem. It means really that kind of each, each uh, here and now that I... I I said before that it was against. I mean, try to focus what's happening, what's vibrating in our in our being here and now, really here and now, in the strict sense, in the one in the sense that I that I test. I mean, like that, as if eternity and infinity is concentrated only in this moment and doesn't happen uh, in other in other dimensions. And at the same time, we focus on what we see. The little sphere means that we don't focus on center and periphery, but on the global unity. And then there's the contrapuntal game about uh, time and space points here, there, close, distant, in time and space. So let, let's try to perform it. And I will, the only sound that I will, will pronunciate is okay when we, we go to, from one bar to another. Let's see what happens doing it all together. Of course, we are rushing. It's, they are not. They are simple things, but it, it's not so simple to get inside the, the, these things so so quickly. But we try. Okay, let's start. Next bar.
next bar. next bar Next and last bar. It's over when you want. So we were all together doing the same thing, but doing different things. I mean, the written score is the same. The action are the same as a principle, but what happens in each one's mind is different course but that's not so different from what happens with music when we listen to music the written score is one the acoustic phenomenon is one but what happens inside every listener is maybe totally different that's all if you have some questions or curiosity or <coughs> philosophies in Buddhism or, or in because of course like this way to meditate in a way or concentrate of what happens in, in the inside of the person and so on tries to kind of remind yes yes culture. yes yeah. yes I'm interested in and even if I'm not so I think that sometimes in, in Western culture we have an idolized version of the Eastern culture idolize in two ways we think that everything there is really only based on infinity eternity and so on like if they were sort of abstract culture but it's also a idolized idolized against us we often think that western culture is a sun is a culture that has to learn these dimensions while this dimension is really part of us if we i'm not christian but i'm uh, i i find that in a way, I'm Christian, even if I don't, I don't, I don't know I am. There's a, a, a moment in the Gospel where Jesus says that 
every day is, every day has its own uh, worries I don't know I, uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry I'm not Christian so my, my quotings are so that it's an invitation to live in the here and now which is part of our, of our culture what happens maybe in the Western culture that the here and now is compressed to carpe diem you know what's happening right today because tomorrow never knows it's a different thing but also in the Christian Actually, thought yes yeah. yes but also in the Christian thought every day is important because it's a part of, of uh, God's kingdom so yes I'm interested in the culture but I'm more even more interested in how much Western Eastern Western and Eastern Eastern culture are are superimposed I find very interesting what Emanuele Severino the philosopher says about Eastern culture he says Eastern culture is not the healing of Western culture is the incubation of the illness of the Western culture so this is just a provocation to say that human culture is complete in, in every just the focus changes yeah. I understand that there has been so much exchange and so much yes work. yes right, right. yes of course yeah no another question was about uh, about the, is this kind of piece intended for the audience to perform together or is it sometimes performed in front of an audience I've never performed it in front of an audience. This is the right. first time I perform it in front of you, but you were performing it in front of me, mm -hmm. so it was performing together. No, it's it's written to be performed on w one's own. So at the at the beginning of the of the score, I was quoting Wittgenstein, that says that solipsism. And here we can see that solipsism, if uh, developed with rigor, it is the pure realism if we plunge inside ourselves we plunge inside reality and in a mystical but even anti-mystical way like then it's not no no Wittgenstein was anti-mystical it was let's say counter mystical it's it's a way of being mystical without speaking about the experience but it's not against that experience uh, and so I think that if you perform it on your own you connect with a with the whole reality with the world what I was trying today it was to, to see if it was I think it more or less worked did you did you, did you think it was working more or less the experience together was it very good I'm glad Peter Jans from Orpheus Institute in Berlin um, thank you very much for, for this presentation thank you now I have two questions the first is do you work on specifying all these um, say um, proposals to actions like for example the difference between ignore a thought and suppress a thought and yes. do not mentalize I think verbalize uh, it so, uh, not mentalize was I read something like yeah. mentalize yeah. it as well yeah. yes it was yeah. also so yes. do not mentalize a thought so the difference between do not menta mentalize a thought and ignore a thought and su suppress a thought yes. that is very subtle uh, so let's say for me as a someone who didn't know this before um, I'm struggling with, with this. So yes. my question, are you working on more specifying or does that not, does that not belong? And the second question is, yes. do you see this exercise as an, as an end point or, or a starting point for further things? And, and if, if that would be the case, what would you like to do further? Okay. I'll, um, I made a mistake when I said mentalize. I, I wanted to say verbalize thoughts. So there are two possibilities. You can verbalize your thoughts or you, tr you can struggle not to verbalize your thoughts. Of course, it's impossible to verbalize every thought. There are also subconscious th thoughts that you cannot verbalize, but it's even impossible not to verbalize any thought. It's just a target to aim. So uh, suppress and ignore. It, it depends on, on the piece. Uh, as you have seen these forms, A, B, A, B. The form A, the form B, and the combination of the two forms. This schematical approach is, um, I use it in order to allow anyone to build their own paths inside. So I don't specify it more because I want the performer or the listener, which in this case is, is the same person, I want, I want him or her to, to find his own way. And it's the, the, the geometric uh, version of the thing I mean a B a B uh, is a is a means is a tool to detach myself instead of saying too many things about what I mean with suppress and what I mean with ignore I let uh, the, the, um, 
the reader, the listener, or the performer make his own or their their own vision of how the two things may be opposed. So it takes time. It's it was it was really an experience to do it now so quickly. So some of these actions are very specific and rather easy. For example, if you have to smell, yes. you can close your eyes yes. and you can you can try to concentrate on if yes. you have to see, you can open your eyes and yes. you can see. But however it's very difficult is to manage the thoughts. Yes. And it is even when smelling, what do you do? You try to detect you are actually in, in inside talking to yourself yes. in a way of thought or, or uh, uh, reflection or consideration uh, about the smell, about the sight, about whatever. So that my, my question is about this. We are living in a, in a, in a culture where verbalizing is extremely important. Important, and yes. We ignore it because we think we are living in, in, in a visual world, which is the case as yes. well. But these thoughts, how do you, how do you want us, uh, how do you yourself manage these different layers of thought, even ignoring thought? That's almost impossible. It's it's a, a never-ending research. It depends also on the situations. When I work with my performance, we can work two years to perform a composition of ten minutes, for example. So we work so very very deeply and very much in going pinpointing every detail. And this composition is uh, it depends. If someone asks me, I can work with the with the one who is reading and try to perform, or I can leave freedom using the geometrical schematical thing so I I it's a permanent research i work on myself it it's a never-ending thing uh, now i'm more able to to non-verbalize thought than i was when i was 20. Uh, i've gained some inner experience and i've lost some inner experience something which is related to the energy of youth the in the, the 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 unity we experience of life when we are young or at least that's what what we remember Maybe when we were young, we were, were feeling fragmented. And so it depends. I can work very much on details. I can leave freedom to the performer, freedom to the listener. If we had the whole day, we could work very much on it. But what it is important is that always it's aiming to a target. It's not important that thing that you go really reach the target and you are able not to verbalize. It's important that you are aiming to it. And this makes something happens inside. When we aim to a target, when we focus, something happens even if we don't reach it. it, it it's again, a, in, a, in a way, it's a religious uh, vision. Faith is something we have to aim to. It's not easy to, to achieve. Again, speaking of a, as a non-religious person. Yeah, sorry again, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna just more questions, but this really reminds me of what is taught in yoga. So do, yes. do you have any practice of that? Or yes, yes. yes. So yes. in fact, because yes, yes. you do in a way, and maybe from that experience yes it is basically a lot of what is taught and what we practice so yes it is yoga but for example it's also Kierkegaard Kierkegaard in uh, Malattia Mortale the deadly illness I don't know the, to translate the title always points that desperately wanting to be yourself desperately refusing to be yourself all the all the opposite extremes lead to a core in which you, you are like in yoga you are not able to say what you are who you are but you feel that you are. So, um, so I don't know if that, if that was, um, maybe a pr provocation back at you then. Is this not more a methodology than it is a piece? It's not, sorry? Is this not more of a methodology and less of a piece? I it's think the it's means of generating yes. composition. Yes. It's not a composition necessarily. Because one would assume in our very closed way of compositions that there's an end point in which everybody knows we're heading for. But you're not giving us that, really, because you can't really control yes. what's going on in here. Yes. So would you say it's a methodology more than it's a piece? I see it as both. Right. And I like this ambiguity. I mean, not I like personally. I think it's precious. It, that's what I always look for in art. Yeah. I like works of art which are methodology, even if they seem a, com a conclu concluded work. Mm. It's a starting point for me. It, it was not the first piece that I have written with the Asian system. The first thing was this composition for voice and violin, in which there are many parameters related to the body and to the perception of the body that leads the performer to unleash the emotional energy. But after composing the first pieces, 
I was focusing that there was this mental core that needed to be focused more. So I wrote this composition and from that moment on I was again expanding from the center. So in a way it's both, like it's both a methodology and both a composition. It is both a starting point and a arrival point. This is an example, this is a composition for Thunder Sheet, a particular version of the Thunder Sheet that I have developed, and I called it HN Sheet, which is a sheet of steel hang with only one hole, which makes a great acoustic difference from a Thunder Sheet. And it's a specific alloy of steel, and it's I work on it I, with some very simple but deciding devices that allows me to have a, a total body relation with it. case I put my hand on the sheet and I transmit the sound through the vibration of my hand it's very slight vibration there are specific scores for these compositions of mine with actions bodily and inner actions so again it's moving on the border between methodology and, and composition for me it's composition because it has a, a temporal shape and it's, it has a, it's, it's a, not an architecture, let's say, but a process, like John was saying yesterday. Some things may happen simultaneously, some things happen diachronically. So it's a shaping time from the inside, let's say. Because, of course, there is a common place in, if you listen to the interview to some pop uh, musician, they always say, music has to come from the inside. They're saying something very important, but they're just selling it away in a, in a stupid way. It really has to come from the inside. I'm tr just trying to define how many ways the inside may be composed. I think we are. Yeah. Thank you. also the name of the presentation by Marta. So
hello, I will perform first and then I will explain myself. Uh, so, a few more seconds with technical things and we'll start. <laughs> We have to try to see each other.
Thank <laughs> you.
work is not the most easy thing to do.
Good morning, I'm sorry, the technique is not always uh, working according to my wishes. But uh, thank you for uh, coming to this lecture aside today. And I'll start from now because we're late. <laughs> so Piano Hero is curatorial exploration of the piano recital. It is an experiment, uh, experimental attempt to introduce curatorial narrative to the piano recital practice as well as to discuss the relevance of this concert genre and pianistic practices in 21st century. The piece is chosen for the recital to give an opportunity to recontextualize piano, pianist, and very form of piano recital. In the context of contemporary art, the curatorial thought became an essential ingredient for a well-formed presentation. Creators and artists in their practices very consciously choose the elements of suggested narrative linked by specific social, historical, and cultural links. In my practice as a pianist and as member of contemporary music ensemble, I feel the growing need to create artistic performances that would be conceptually strong and unanimous. In my presentation, I am suggesting the performance based on the idea of a performer curator as an extended professional competence for modern musicians. When asked to define the work of curator, superstar curator of Serpentine Gallery in London, Hans Ulrich Obrist answered, Today, curating as a profession means at least four things. It means to preserve in the sense of safeguarding the heritage of art. It means to be selector of a new work and it means to connect uh, art history. And also it means to displaying or arranging the work. These four things are exactly what every performer does in his work. But the question is how consciously musicians are thinking about the forms of the presentation and the repertoire choices in their practices. For this conscious attempt to use curator cura curatorial practices in my performance, I choose to concentrate to the most popular genre, 
It is piano recital. The title Piano Hero not only reflects one of the pieces that I played, but also is a code that allows to question and rethink the very idea of one's action in front of piano on stage. One of the pieces presented in the recital is Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2 by Ferenc Liszt. This piece is chosen as a rep representation of a most important invention for the piano performance tradition, piano recital itself. Until the middle of 19th century, venues were the places of pure entertainment. The programming was dependent on the wishes of general public. The performances were full of show elements. Progr programs were formed around different musical genres and mixed instrumentation. Liszt was the person who suggested the format focused around the performer, performer who is playing a solo program, performing the music from memory on stage, where piano is turned 90 degrees from the audience. In or, uh, this was because uh, there was a need for audience to see the facial expressions of the soloist and the sa at the same time to see virtu virtuoso finger work. Musicologist Robert Greenberg says it, says it best. Franz Liszt was the template, the model for every performing concert pianist since 1840s. It is important to notice that from the time this format was suggested, in its purest form, is still the dominant practice for pianists. Liszt, in his own right, was a curator by the definition of today. As research in Liszt studies shows, Liszt managed to manipulate all the tools for foresee the potential success in particular cities track the change in the audience, as well as consciously form his reputation in the press of the day. The idea of Liszt was that the reflection of cultural needs around 1940s surprisingly didn't change much to this day. In the article in New, York, in New Yorker, Alex Ross is stating, the problem isn't that the modern way of giving concert has grown hopelessly discrepant, as some say, is that music has for too long been restricted to a single, almost universally duplicated format. So as I noticed before, if we would look to the concert halls around the world, we would see the exact reproduction of this format. Usually pianists not only re repeat the position at the piano and s simple things as such, but also the repertoire around the concert halls does usually include only, as I would say, grand names, as Bach, Beethoven, Brahms, Schumann, Prokofian, and so on, present them together in the same program. Only reason for this to present in the same program being that the pieces are considered uh, a masterpiece. Although successfully bringing music lovers to the venues, uh, this recital tradition raises few questions. This is what, what we usually imagine when we say piano recital, that's the first thought. So the questions. Why is there a constant repetition of the same names and titles, although piano repertoire is so wa vast and diverse? Is the piano repertoire represented fairly by the pianists today? Also, how consciously pianists are thinking about format of their performance? I would like to outline the example behind the programming and the presentation of the piano performance that I found original and refreshing in the context of usage of piano recital format and stood out of the general practice. Performance artist Marina Abramovic collaborated with pianist Igor Levit to present a project called Golper. This is image from that performance. In this performance, the musical choice was legendary variations by Johann Sebastian Bach, Golberg variations. This performance was Abramovic's way to continue her exploration of art as a tool of presence or in other words, conscious. The first thing that every member of audience had to do is to give, give away all of their modern devices. The performers started, started way before the first note was playing. For an half an hour, the audience were sitting in the silence with, a, with the spe special headphones. For that collaborator, it was, it was important to prepare overstimulated audience to the experience of the music listening. As Abramovich states today, in the 21st century, we don't have the capacity to listen to classical music in a form that was done before. The artist created new set of piano recital and gave an audience a contemporary art inspired experience. So it seems to be a radical idea to me 
as a professional pianist working in 21st century to be limiting myself to 88 keys of keyboard. I found that pieces that does reflect variety of piano sound production possibilities are amongst the most interesting to perform. Extended techniques, electroacoustic music, performative pieces, these are attractive to me both in artistic way and most exciting to present to the public. We have two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. So basically the, the what I wanted to say following was to talk a bit about the pieces that you just heard, but as you heard them so maybe <laughs> then yeah. I will finish. We are too late. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. So, yeah. Very sorry. Very no, sorry it's to fine, interrupt no, no. you in the, okay. in the contents of the, the, the work. Okay. So, we, we have to move on to the next. Thank you all for. Performances might reveal important differences between aesthetics and ear. Thank you. 